house. How you doing, Orpheus? Man, I am well, Brandon. How are you? I'm doing great, man. We go way back. How far back do we go? Listen, man, you're going to start making me think about my age. <laughs> Probably too far back, but man, some good times. I'm sure we're better than 15 years. It's probably more like 18 to 19 years. Yeah. Appreciate you so much, my friend, for coming on the show. I'm happy to have you. Yes, yeah, good to be here, man, and thank you for the invitation. You are more than welcome. So let's go all the way back. You were seven years old. Was it Bronx or was it Brooklyn? It was actually Queens, Queens New York. Queens. Yeah. Far, okay. Queens, New York. Yeah. Queens. So you grew up in Queens, seven years old. You were introduced to uh, martial arts, and there's a very special gentleman who impacted your life in a, a major way, Osensei Ronald Duncan. And I, I did some research on Ronald Duncan, amazing uh, gentleman. So take us back on how you got started, what got you into the, the field and where you are today? Yeah, I was seven years old. Um, I was introduced to the martial arts uh, by my father, my dad, naturally seeing I was a young man that struggled with confidence, struggled with um, my own self-image, and he thought martial arts would be a great way to um, to build that image. And so he first got me involved with uh, what's called karate, and I uh, tried that out for a little while, didn't really like it much, and uh, ended up quitting. And um, through through the process of time, um, he continued to do some research. And my uncle interest said, hey, there's a gentleman, uh, O Sensei Ronald Duncan, who um, is teaching right here in Queens, New York. And you might want to try him. And so at seven years old, I was introduced to him and uh, started training with him. And I stayed with him for approximately 17 years or so. And he was much like a second father to me. So Orpheus, you said karate and martial arts. For the viewers, what's the difference between the two? Yeah, so martial arts is a big umbrella that just covers all combative art forms, inclu including karate. Um, the art form that I ended up in with O-Sensei Ronald Duncan is called ninjutsu. And so martial arts is the big umbrella. And under that umbrella, you have karate, ninjutsu, jujitsu, judo. There's just a many, mm -hmm. many martial arts that many people, Taekwondo, those are, that's a famous one. Most people know Kung Fu. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have various art forms and various categories of fighting arts. And uh, the one that I became, uh, that became my specialty is ninjutsu. So Orpheus, what was your first move at seven years old? <laughs> well, first move was probably like some kind of kick or something like that, thinking I was some kind of superhero. You know, when you first start learning martial arts, you think you're getting invited into immortality. And you can do the superhuman things that you see on TV. So probably some kind of kick. I probably hurt myself trying it at first. <laughs> it's, just uh, like, it's like starting with A in the alphabet and you right. hadn't made it to the end yet. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So that was my mm. probably my first introduction is probably some kind mm. of kick that fell down, hurt myself. And, and I, I like what you said. Your confidence was kind of low. So you got in to build your confidence up. What can you say to the young man out there, the young child out there today who is possibly considering getting into the field? What can you say to that individual? I would say that martial arts is definitely a confidence builder because it's a character builder. Mm. So martial arts has as much to do with physicality as it does to do with mentality. And most would argue that it's more about mentality than it is anything else. And it helps you to get a level of focus. It helps you to discover yourself and it helps to give you a strong level of confidence and self-esteem. And so um, it is often referred to in martial arts as one of the greatest developments of self-discipline. Mm -hmm. And so I would say to any young man that's interested in the martial arts that you don't go in it to go into it just because you want to learn how to fight, but you go into it. <laughs> Hold on, hold on, hold on, Orpheus. Go back to that because I almost yeah. went into it because I wanted to learn how to fight. Can you spend yeah. a little more time on that? Yeah. You know, I think a lot of people go into martial arts because they just want to be, you know, that, like I said, they want to get invited into some kind of immortality, you mm -hmm. know, catch bullets with your teeth or something like that that you saw on TV in the movie The Last Dragon or <laughs> just some kind of cool thing that you want to do. But martial arts is certainly it can teach you great things about self-defense. It has definitely saved my life on numerous occasions. But I would I would suggest that it is not just about the fighting and you don't get into it just 
to learn how to fight, you quickly discover that it has so much to do with learning ethics. It has a lot to do with just learning about life and being respectful and learning how to be grateful for what you have. And it teaches you so much about being uh, about valuing life and making the greatest or rather reaching your highest potential in life. Mm -hmm. So martial arts has a lot to do with that. Orpheus, you mentioned that it saved your life on numerous occasions. And O Sensei Ronald Duncan, his philosophy was teaching you uh, to prepare in case something happens in yeah. real life. So have you ever, uh, well, I guess my question is, does the law restrict the use of martial arts in self-defense? Um, the answer to that is um, yes and no. So the, the way I wanna answer that is one, certainly I've had to use martial arts growing up to uh, save my life on occasion. Uh, growing up in New York City was not easy. Mm. Um, there were times when I, I went to schools that were difficult. And, and, you know, the school I went to, you had to fight your way up the hill and fight your way down the hill. It was just one of those realities. And so martial arts was certainly something that helped. But as, as it relates to the law, um, the law does not allow for anything that is excessive mm. uh, hurt or harm to anyone. And that goes for any citizen. So th there are not specific laws for martial artists, but certainly because we're martial artists, what we do in a self-defense situation can seem excessive. So we have to be careful to only use what is necessary to subdue a threat. And that's true of any citizen. That would be what the law would say to anyone. However, we have to be more careful because we learn detailed aspects of the anatomy. We know where to hit someone. We know how mm. to hit someone. Um, and we, we know how to damage bone structure and things of that nature. And so we have to be careful in how much we use in any situation because it can look excessive. So there's no legality against martial arts, at least not in the United States for the most part, but you do have to be careful about how much you use and how excessive you are because you are considered dangerous. And not only are you considered a weapon with your skill set, but you're also a six degree black belt. And through my research, it can take easily over 25 years to get to that level. So what exactly does a six degree black belt know that a first, second through fifth degree does not know? Well, um, the the six degree black belt um, attains the title of Shihan, which basically means master teacher. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, six degree just suggests in most art forms, the it's the highest combative level that you reach. And mm -hmm. um, what you're learning at first degree, second degree, third degree, fourth degree black belt, from first degree to third degree, you are a sensei. Uh, or for, I mean, excuse me, from first to fourth, you're a sensei. Mm -hmm. And then um, in many systems, when you get to fifth down, you are considered a master. And then in sixth down, you're considered a master teacher. So um, I think the difference is, is not always in how much you know, but how much you've refined what you know. Mm. So it's about the refinement of the skill sets. And so at first dawn, you learn these interesting things about combat. And then at six dawn, it is suggested that you've refined it. Um, so that has more to do with it than necessarily more knowledge. It's the refinement of the combative art, arts as you go. So um, that, that's more to do with time, uh, refinement, and how you polish the combative skills that you know. And patience, too. I mean, it, it didn't happen overnight. You stayed the course. So with the 10th degree being the highest level, do you have plans to obtain that, you know, that great honor? Or are you comfortable where you are at the sixth degree? <laughs> I'm real comfortable where I am. Um, I, I think when you start talking about 10th Don, that's a title that is often bestowed upon mm. you based on time, based on how many black belts you've created, mm. based on uh, much of the contributions that you have uh, implemented into the martial arts world. And so when you're talking about seventh Don to 10th Don, it's not very combative as much as it is honors bestowed. And um, and so when you talk about 10th Don and you start getting the title of Hanchi or O Sensei, um, that means that you have not only refined your own art form, but you have launched others into the martial arts career and they have become masters. And so that would be more of a time element. So Orpheus, straight up, man, uh, 
have you ever lost? You said you had to fight your way up the hill, down the hill. We want to know, have you ever gone down? I, I probably <laughs> have gone down. Um, I'm more than positive of that. Um, I would say in by the time I became proficient in the martial arts, uh, meaning I knew what I was doing, I, my, I, I got my first degree black belt when I was 15 years old. Uh, by the time I was 15, um, I didn't go down after that. Uh, I, I, you know, I had the, the altercations I had, of course, you have the element of surprise. Well, was, you know, everybody's I, watching, man. Everybody's yeah. watching. So choose yeah, those I, words carefully. Yeah. I'm a short guy. Um, and so most people I'm unassuming. So they would, they would probably assume that I'm a, I'm a person that they can get over on. Um, so I have the element of surprise on my side. And so people usually underestimate you. And they get a big surprise when they when they come at someone like me. So uh, once I became proficient, I, I was I was pretty well OK. So you said you started when you were seven, became a black belt when you were 15. I'm 41. If someone is my age. I know the answer is it's not too late to start, but can right. someone at 40, 41 still get to the black belt level or has father time eliminated that option? Oh, not at all. Uh, not at all. Um, in fact, um, you can, as you have articulated, you can start at any point. It typically takes on an average about five years to get a black belt on an average. And that's a rough average. There are some people who like anything, they excel faster. And then there's some people who move slower. Um, martial arts is, is something that you do at your pace. And uh, the particular art forms are different. So when you say ninjutsu, uh, ninjutsu is a different kind of art form than other arts. But on an average, it takes about five years. And so a person can start late. I've, I've practiced with people who started as late as 60 or 70 and uh, and they attained their black belts. And I've trained mm. alongside men who started older and they attained their black belts. And so um, I think it's just a matter of dedication and people develop at their own pace according to their own skill sets. And a good teacher knows how to judge a student based on their own merit. And so mm. I think that's important to martial arts is your own development. It's like golf. You know, when you play golf, you, it's not you against the opponent. It's you against the ball. There right? you go. And, and martial arts the same way. It's you against yourself. Mm. And you're pushing yourself to the greatest limit so that you can ultimately be the best you that you can be. So Osun say Ronald Duncan was connected with the way of the winds. And now you have a way the way. Is it the way of the winds? Yeah, the way of the way wind. of the winds location in Atlanta, Georgia. Tell yeah. us about way of the winds. People in Atlanta who can connect with you to receive training and be a part of your program. Yeah, so the Atlanta way of the winds is a is an eclectic art form that was created by O Sensei Ronald Duncan because he had he knew so many different art forms, and so through a combination of a variety of disciplines that he teaches, he put it all under the umbrella of way of the winds. So mm. that includes ninjutsu. Uh, which is an espionage assassination art form. Mm. Uh, and then you have Aiki Jiu Jitsu, you have Aikido, uh, you have various arts that he studied and he put them under the umbrella of Way of the Winds. And so right now, Hanshi Gregory Duncan is the head of the system. He is the chief instructor. That's his son, alongside with Ronald Duncan Jr. Those two are the chief instructors of the Way of the Wind system. And I was licensed to open a branch in Atlanta, Georgia. And so I have a branch and was before O Sensei Ronald Duncan passed away. He asked would I open a school in Atlanta and I was honored to do mm. so. People can connect with me via Facebook, the Atlanta Way of the Winds page. And uh, there you can see videos, you can see write-ups, you can see some of the things I teach. And if you inbox us, we get right back to you to tell you how you can further connect with us and actually have a visit to the dojo. And then, of course, the website Atlanta Way of the Winds is also up where you can go to the Atlanta Way of the Winds Facebook uh, website and you can connect with us that way as well. But my expertise is in ninjutsu, which is a espionage art form that deals with some of the traditional forms of taijutsu um, and the traditional arts of assassination, which we don't teach much. Uh, we, we don't try to make that but the center of the art, but it's part of the history of the art and some of the other aspects of it that are combative. And so that's, in essence, uh, the ninjutsu art forms. And uh, we, we just love Way of the Winds. I love teaching it. I love my students. And, uh, and we have a great time. Man, Orpheus, 
thank you so much for coming on. Proud of you, man. Wish the best to you. Hopefully you'll bring your, your services online. I don't know if you can do that, if you have to actually have somebody in front of you. Are you going to be offering those services? Yeah, so someone just approached me. Funny you brought that up. Somebody just gave me the idea. They said I needed to start um, online um, courses that can be accessed through an app where people can mm. watch me demonstrate these different techniques and learn from that venue. Yeah. So I thought man, it is. that is not a bad idea. So I do plan to do that. If Bruce Lee can have a, a award-winning movie, I can see you doing the same thing, my friend. Hey, man, I would love to do it, man. All right, man. Best wishes to you, everybody. That is Sheehan Orpheus Hayward, Six Degree Black Belt, Way of the Winds. Orpheus, appreciate you coming on.